Hi, and welcome to this Excel VBA Quickie, where I'm going to show you how to select data from other worksheets. Specifically, I'm going to show you how to use VBA and macros to go over to this data tab and get some data and then put it on to the master tab over here. So let's go to the VBA window and let me show you how to do that. And this is going to be a very pointed, specific tutorial. Don't worry about all these notes. I'm going to cover them throughout the tutorial. And then down here at the bottom section, I just have a list of additional things that I cover throughout the full VBA course, which if you're interested in, you can go ahead and sign up for at this link. So up here at the top of the notes, I've got the syntax. And this is how you're going to structure your range references for other worksheets. Because the whole premise of this, the way that this works, is yes, you may already know how to select a range in the worksheet. And if you don't, don't worry, I'll cover that. But all you have to do here to get it from another worksheet is go ahead and plop a worksheet reference in front of that range reference. Now, if that sounds confusing, don't worry about it. Let's go ahead and get into an example, and it'll be a little bit easier, I think, as we go along. Let's get some space so we can center this guy. And first up, what worksheet do we want to deal with? Well, we just type worksheets, open parentheses, quotation, and the name of the worksheet you want to deal with. I want to deal with the data worksheet. All right, now I've told the macro I am going to deal with the data worksheet. Now, once you've told it what worksheet you want to deal with, you have to tell it what range you want to deal with. So we type dot range, open parentheses, quotation mark. Now, what range do you want to deal with? Well, let's deal with range A3. And there are about a million different ways to make range references, and I cover them in the full course. Here I'm going to stick with just this very simple one that's going to look familiar to anyone who's made a formula in the worksheet. We have A for column A and 3 for row 3, so A3. Now we have told the macro I want to work with data worksheet and range A3 on data worksheet. Okay, well, what do you want to do with it? You can do a million different things with it. Let's go ahead and get the value from it. And that's the basic way to get the cell value. Now, a lot of times you're going to see it where it's written without dot value because that defaults to dot value. So this automatically defaults to dot value, this right here. But I think it's better to just be very descriptive and say, hey, I want to get the value because there are a million other things you could get and you don't want to get a little bit confused there. So this is the basic reference. But we haven't done anything with this yet. So let's go ahead and put this value into the value on the master worksheet. And what we're going to do for that is just go in front of it, create another reference, this time to the master worksheet, then another range reference, this time to cell A4. And what do we want to do? Well, we want to access the value property. That's what it's called. And what do we want to do? We want to set it to something else. So you put an equal sign there. And then you say what you want to set it equal to, which is this value. And now we have a working macro. So let's go back to the worksheet and test it out. Alt F11, Alt F8. And look at cell A4 right here when I click Run right now. ASC-2. ASC-2. Perfect. The value from A3 on data has gone to the value in A4 on the master worksheet. Now that's all there is to it. That's the very basic way to do it. But what I'm going to do before I leave you is show you the slight addition that will make this much more robust. So you can just do this as many times as you need to, to take a value from one place and put it in another one. But it is better if we create some variables and a variable is just a container for data. So we type the word dim and then a unique name, no spaces, no weird characters, dim my variable. And we give it a type. Let's give it a variant, which is a type of a variable that basically holds anything, just a big empty bucket. Now we have a variable called my variable. All right, so let's put something in that container. I'm going to go down here, and what I want to do is just to take this guy right here. I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to put it inside of the variable. So now we've gotten a value from the other worksheet. We've put it inside this variable, and now what we want to do, copy that guy, and let's replace this right here with the variable. This will do the exact same thing as the previous version of this macro that we just ran. The benefit of this is that now anytime we want to reference this value from the data worksheet at range A3, we just reference this variable and we can reference it as many times as we need to throughout the macro. And if we ever have to change the worksheet or range reference, we just change it once 
up here. So let's test it out to make sure everything's good. I will delete this and then Alt F8, enter to run it, and there we go. So you see, it's not that difficult. You just have to remember a few basic patterns. And when it comes to referencing data on other worksheets, you just type worksheets, then name of the other worksheet, then a range, where do you want to get the value from? And then if you want to get the value, you type dot value. Once again, optional, but I do recommend it. And then if you want to change the value of the cell, you put an equal sign. If you want to get it, you just do it like this. And then either store it in a variable or store it directly in the range like we did the first time around. Now, this is a very pointed, specific tutorial for how to get data from one worksheet onto another worksheet. But there are a million different things you could do. You can store range references in variables, so you only have to hard code them once. You can store workbook references in variables. You can do so many things. You can get this guy right here dynamically. You can get it from the last row, the next empty row. You can do the same down here. You can do so many different things, which I cover thoroughly in the full course. So if you're interested in learning more about VBA, definitely check it out. I've got a link to it right here and in the description of this video.